All right, hi everybody. So we have a lot to talk about today. It's gonna to be a bit of a longer video because I need to tell you a lot, especially my video on Gemini 2.0 is 10 days old or two weeks old. And Google just came out with 2.5, which is a banger of a model. So we have the preview built. So just keep in mind, this will get even better and even cheaper. You could get rate limited when you're working with preview models from Gemini but it's still such a good model at such a good price. You can get it pretty much for free currently. The, the limits are really big on it. So if we compare Gemini, it is a thinking model. It is also multimodal, so it is able to do a lot of things. And it is comparable, if we go to these benchmarks here, it is in the same category as the heavyweight thinking models. OpenAI 03, Cloud Sonnet 3.7 thinking mode, DeepSeek R1, and Grok3. So it is crushing these benchmarks. We did not expect this from Google, especially right after Gemini 2.0 was recently released. So I didn't expect it to come this fast. Another big surprise is that if you go on Chatbot Arena, which is essentially regular people evaluating these models as a blind test, it had the biggest jump from uh, as to number one space with nearly 40 points. So it jumped 34 points here which is a massive, massive jump from before. So this means that people are thinking, are feeling this model is really good just by using it, by testing it, by testing it out in the wild. This is not just prefabricated, you know, vendor locked in evaluations. This is real world evaluations. Where I personally think it shines, um, just, just so you understand is that it is, if I go into Google AI Studio here, it is a bit of a more slower model. And this is both good and bad. The good part about this is that Google is giving it time. So it's increasing the test time compute, which means that the model runs, the inference runs for longer and double checks its own output a few times to reflect on it. This is essentially the chain of thought that O1 pioneered back in, um, in the fall of 2024. So you would not use this model for a simple use case like letting your grandmother ask about or pizza recipe that you know is going to be terrible anyway because grandmother shouldn't be doing pizza unless they're Italian. But bear with me, because what I think this model is super useful for is as the engine behind your coding agents. So just an example here, I asked it to create in Cursor the game of life. Let me just open that back up. I asked it to open the game of life and it took the time, you know, to understand it's working in Bun. It read the environment near it. So it's really good at doing these tools that require planning. And another use case that I really like, that I think is really interesting with these thinking models is doing mathematics. So a good example here, I asked it a, a scenario, a random person at 35 years old wanting to know if they can retire. This is a pretty optimistic scenario. I don't think anybody has these real life scenarios working um, in this current economy. However, you can see it waited, it um, taught for 31 seconds, which is a lot. So it did a few iterations on it. It calculated a little bit. And in the end, it gave me an answer that I could retire at age 53. What I didn't like about this was that it says an initial 4% withdrawal rate, which in the financial literature is considered to be a bit too high. You want to do variable uh, withdrawal, but, but don't, don't think about the retirement part. If I instead compare this with the answers I got on Claude Sonnet 3.7, it thought for a big total of eight seconds and gave me an even more um, aggressive timeline here. So this is not bad per se, but I think the most interesting part is if you use it with the remote code execution, which is my favorite mode for Gemini. So let's jump into my editor again. This is the repo that I'm cur currently using to test Gemini. Um, I used it for 2.0 and I'll post the link to this repo with the updated code in the description. So I'm using essentially this um, Google Gen AI package. If I go to utils, it's the NPM package, Google slash generative AI. I just instantiate the package here, passing it my env key that I got into the Google Generative AI Studio. And then 
and consume it for a regular prompt. It's pretty simple. I just tell which model I want. Then I craft a prompt and I just await the response. Pretty simple. But what I find interesting is this code execution. So code execution paired with thinking mode is really powerful for a few reasons. So here we have the same question. We have the question about retirement. We give a few parameters, how much a person is investing, the, the rate of return before taxes, blah, blah, blah. What it's able to do with code execution is that it has this thinking mode, so it can think about its plan, but it's, all, it's also aware that it can execute code. It has access to tools, so when it's doing its plan, it's able to craft code that it can run to do the calculations instead of just relying on the, on the thought process for the model on the chain of thought. So if I go into my editor, which I, I pre-did just because this runs sometimes for over a minute, it gets something pretty interesting. It calculated, you know, uh, in Python, if can retire, it did a bit of forecasting, which I'm really happy about. It also recaps some um, assumptions, explained a bit pre-tax. It, it really went super deep. It planned until age 95, which is typically considered really conservative. So it, it's good. The model is doing everything precisely. And it was able to do really deep forecasting based on using this tool here. So what I'm trying to illustrate is that you now have a model that is really cheap. It's in preview mode, so you might not want to run it in production, but it's really cheap. It can do thinking mode and it can right out of the box execute code to validate its answers. This right here is one of the most powerful engine for any AI applications you might want out there. It's also its context window is simply huge. It has 1 million um, context um, window, so 1 million tokens, which can fit major code bases. May maybe not production, you know, enterprise repos, but it can fit 90% of your code bases of irregular small applications if you remove things like um, modules, installations, um, and other files. So there you go. That's what I wanted to cover today. Really great model. Um, this video might be updated in a week, but uh, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, try to come out with two of these videos per week to give you the latest news. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Please leave comments, uh, what you want me to work on, to discuss, and I'll see you in the next one.